Welcome into College Corner. We got college basketball Saturday, an absolutely loaded slate. I think there's 180 plus games here as we get our lead up here to the Super Bowl on Sunday. I'm going to share with you my four favorite plays that I'm getting to very early on Friday. It's just after three o'clock. So I always say this, if you do see any lines move and you have questions whether or not you would still play these or if you should still play these at these numbers, let me know in the comments down below or hit me up on Twitter. That link is down below in the description. This week so far, Tuesdays and Wednesdays video, uh, we are four and three. Two and one on, on Wednesday, two and two or two and one on Tuesday, two and one on or two and one on Tuesday, two and two on Wednesday. Uh an 0 and two, two and oh start, oh and two finish to that card on Wednesday. But Looking to bounce back, keep things going, stay in the positives here. Let's jump into these plays for Saturday. First up, little one, bar off, a little bit more off the board here, not traditionally looking at the power the power conferences. I really like App State minus seven and a half. They're hosting Toledo on Saturday. A little bit of a weird out-of-conference matchup here this late in the season is strange, but this is a nightmare matchup for the Rockets. So their opponents are shooting 57.3% from two this season. One of the worst in the country. It's actually bottom, what, seven, bottom eight in the country. Uh, 357th in two-point defense. And App State is getting 58% of their points from two. That is 19th in the country. So this is where they do their damage. And and Toledo just cannot defend there. They're a terrible defense as it is, but in this particular matchup, it is extra bad for them. And then meanwhile, with the Mountaineers, they're one of the most, more elite defensive units in the mid-majors. Team to be looking out for, potentially to be able to make the NCAA tournament. Toledo uh, is a team that uh, looks to take very, very few threes. They're bottom 20 in three-point attempts this year. So you're looking at an App State team uh, in terms of how they match up defensively. Their two-point defense is top 10 in the country. Very, very good. 44% their opponents are shooting from two. Unreal. Very, very good there. And they also do a great job keeping teams off the line. Top five there. And this is where Toledo looks to do their damage. They're pretty reliant on getting to the free throw line as well. So defensively, a great matchup. And then you have a team that can't defend as well in Toledo. App's got a slight advantage here on the glass. It's pretty close, but App has a slight advantage on both ends. You got a really good defense going up against a terrible defense and a bad matchup for the, those defenses and, and the Toledo offense. I'll take to App State, even if they do got to cover by more than a few points here. Give me the minus seven and a half. Next, going to an under here. Providence Butler under 144 and a half. Man, I had a Butler under last week with Creighton and they scored nearly 200 points. So going into this one without any fear here, I'm, I'm willing to go back to this Butler team for an under. Neither one of these teams too crazy when it comes to pace, too slow or too fast. Providence is 218th, Butler is 150. First, so pretty close to the national average, but I love how these defenses match up. So Providence wants to take a lot of threes with Devin Carter, with Pierre, uh, with Pierre, with Jane Pierre. Ticket gains. This is a team that wants to score a lot from three. And Butler ranks as a very good three-point defense, top 70. Their opponents are shooting just under 32% this season. And they do a great job defending without fouling as well, which Providence is a team that wants to get to the line. So should be tough sledding offensively here for Providence. And Providence is a team who's pretty poor on the offensive rebounding end. They're 259th. So they're not going to be able to grab a lot of second chance points. Josh Duros been having a terrific little run here since Bryce Hopkins went out, but they're still not a monstrous team on the offensive glass. Defensive glass, though, they take care of business. They're in the top 100 there, so don't expect second chance points for either one of these teams, which is great for us betting this under. The Friars, though, when it comes to their defense, top 20 in opponent effective field goal percentage, elite interior defense where Butler looks to get the majority of their points. They're top 13 here in two-point defense. I don't think we're going to see these teams getting up those second chance points or easy points. They're not going to find themselves in the bonus early because they're not going to get to the free throw line enough. I think this number is a tad bit too high. I think this game's played in the 130s as opposed to the 140s. So give me the under 144 and a half. Next, we head to the Big 12. Big matchup here between two ranked opponents. I really like Kansas at home. Minus six against Baylor. Look, Jayhawks are coming off a terrible loss to Kansas State. Honestly, inexcusable loss to Kansas State. Uh, but... KU has not lost a game at home this, this season. Playing at Allen Fieldhouse is it's just one of the toughest places to play for road opponents, and Kansas takes advantage of that night in and night out at home. Uh, so I really like them in this particular spot because their offense should have a lot of success, which it didn't against Kansas State. Baylor ranked this, ranks 208th in two-point defense. Over 51% their opponents are shooting. Kansas is a team, if you know them well and have watched them play, they don't take many threes. Look for Hunter Dickinson and KJ Adams to have a field day inside for this Kansas offense. They're going to be able to take advantage of Baylor's biggest weakness defensively. And the Kansas defense has been absolutely elite at home this season. Got one of the best interior defenses in the country as well. So Baylor's a team that's 
can run hot from three. They're one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country, but they don't take too many. And I've noticed, you know, we had the big game from uh, Ray J. Dennis the other night, but um, uh, Walter has kind of been underwhelming, has not shot well in recent weeks. So I think this Baylor offense isn't quite as good as it was early in the season on the road here. I'm going to take Kansas. I know this is a fair bit of points, but I feel comfortable doing it because of how good they've been at home uh, in this particular spot. I like them to bounce back. So give me them minus six. Okay, heading to the SEC to finish things out here. I really like Georgia on the money line against Arkansas. Georgia won this game at home about a month ago now, but now UGA has really fallen off. They've lost four straight here. Now, Arkansas hasn't been great either, but for me, despite the fact this team is reeling, this matchup is way too good for me to pass up. When I get into the numbers here, it just had to be something to play as a spot where they're just a short one and a half point underdog. I'll grab them here at a plus money spot. So, one of the biggest weaknesses for Georgia this season and why they've been reeling as of late, rebounds, but getting killed on the glass, especially giving up offensive boards. Arkansas is a team that's not going to be able to take advantage of that. They are not a good offensive or defensive rebounding team this year either. So Georgia shouldn't have as many issues when it comes to giving up those second chance points and failing to grab some of their own. And then as well, what I like here, the Hogs defense has two major struggles, stopping the three, 297th three-point defense, and keeping teams off the line. And that is exactly what Georgia is going to do. They're going to pull up from beyond the perimeter, or they're going to attack the rim and get to the line. And Arkansas will definitely let them do that. And as well, you know, with this must team, uh, this group does not look cohesive in any way, shape, or form. Playing a lot of individual ball, their assist rate this season is super, super low. It's almost inside or almost outside the top 300 this season. A lot of individual ball here, and you're looking at the Bulldogs, and they do defend the field quite well. Their opponent effective field goal percentage is below 49%. I link, think their defense does enough here. I know it's a road spot for this Georgia team. But I do think their offense performs in a big way, and I just can't trust Arkansas in a lot of situations. So I'll take Georgia here in basically a pickup spot. All right, those are my four favorite plays early on here in the college basketball Saturday slate, a stacked one for us. If you're looking for more, drop me a follow on Twitter. I already have a few more that I'm eyeing here that aren't in this video uh, and could have them posted by the time you get to it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're looking for more college basketball content, which we will have for you. We will see you guys on the next one.